Hello, what's up everybody? Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and I'll be reviewing Friday Night Smackdown-ish. And you can hear that I'm feeling a lot better. And I want to thank everybody once again, those that did, for the well wishes, speedy recoveries, and everything in between. I appreciate it. Because this recovery, is, I, I still got a minimum, maybe even maximum, two and a quarter weeks left. So... Uh, it's it's, it's going to be a long haul. Uh, part of, uh, Before I get into this, just want to say I suffered a second degree burn. It took the skin right off my back. It's from the heating pad. Um, didn't know what was happening. Um, sweat, heat, a tiny amount of time. Actually, it was more like I'm laying there and I roll over and it's like, oh, that feels real good. Ah! Roll over real quick and I'm like, Ah, that hurt. And then uh, later, Cedra just uh, noticed there was a a uh, swollen. It was, it was bad. And then gave it a day and a half. And then I felt the liquid. And she just peeled the skin right off. As as Jacob Fatu has said in MLW, all the way to the goddamn white meat. Because that's as far as it went. So I'm trying to recover from that. Anyone that suffered those burns, you know how bad they itch. They, they, when the air hits it, it, whoo, you just want someone to take a fork and dig into you like you a Christmas turkey or something, and, and that'll just make the world better. That's what it feel like. Feel your skin trying to squeeze in on itself. It's, it's, it's not cool. It ain't my, it's not my first burn, and I'm hoping it's my last. So, with that said, uh, let's get on into this, all right? Because, Y'all might be surprised at how I cover certain things. And you might be annoyed that I didn't cover one thing, actually two. And I'm letting y'all know right now, I did not cover the six women tag match. Because I'm like, I don't even know what that got to do with anything. I just don't even care. I want to see Jay, but I don't want to see the rest. Bianca's all right. Her entrance, I'm not a fan of. You can't be so happy to come out to a match where you, you got to conduct business. Um, and then the whole Nia Jax backstage thing. I was like, that's going to just take a long time. It was very neon-y looking, so I wasn't happy with that. Um, and I didn't see much of it. No, I really didn't. It was just, I saw Chelsea Green. How much did you hear all of that? I was like, I'm, I'm done. So if y'all mad that I didn't cover that, y'all going to have to be mad because nope. So... This starts off, well, okay, <clears throat> read my notes here. Reading is fundamental. That line came from House Party back in the day. I rarely use it, but it's funny to me when I do. This kicks off with Grayson Waller effect, and if not for Cody and things that could happen, I'd skip it. So after Cody enters the ring, Waller goes into maximum thunder stealing mode by cutting off his ring boasts, uh, which means his pyro and opening catchphrase. He, he cut that off too. Cody puts over Kevin Owens and questions Waller's motives with Austin Theory. So they're going to, I think they're starting the dissension there. Maybe, not so sure. Calls Cody, um, well, Cody calls out Waller simply using Theory and everyone waiting for the moment that Theory does something about it. And you can see Theory thinking about it. And I'm like, okay, maybe we got something going. Because I think I know that Theory's predominantly been a heel, but I think he'd be a really good baby face. And when it comes to A Town Down Under, if you break them up, I don't know who was gonna be the baby face. I really don't. It'd be like the Rockers if it's Shawn Michaels and Shawn Michaels. That's that's what it looked like. So they might have to hold off on that. So then Wallace shows Cody a montage of Owens turning on prominent baby faces. And when it's over, Owens comes out. He's on the mic. Owens admits that he did all those things, but Kofi Kingston was the only guy that didn't have it coming. And I like it. You know, they they, they all kind of had it coming. Okay, Kofi, he didn't. That's, that's on me. I was, I, was, <laughs> I, I, was, I was laughing. Kevin Owens comes across as real. And I'm starting to like him now. He comes across as the guy that 
does it break the fourth or third wall or any wall? It just makes sense. And so I'm enjoying that. Um, Owens asked Aldis to come out, which uh, maybe it was a little, because it seemed like Aldis was already coming out. But he does. And so they make the main event of Owens and Rhodes versus A-Town Down Under. And this is my first time hearing Waller speak like uninterrupted with no fans screaming. So I was like, okay, he's Aussie, it seems. So, okay, cool. I mean, a town down under, yeah, but Australians and New Zealands are really kissing cousins when it comes to accent. Um, so Owens asked Aldis if he has time to punch them in the face. All this looks at his quote unquote watch because if he wasn't watching, it was covered up by the cufflinks and, and the, the dress shirt. But he's like, he says, Yeah, 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 just make it quick. <laughs> I was like, Thanks. And he runs and he says, The fight starts. I thought that was magnificent. I thought that was amazing. I loved that part. That's one thing that Owens has done since I started watching this. I'm like, Owens comes across as real, like something you should actually see. It's like, Okay, boss, I'm not going to break the rules here, but, you know, I got time to just bust somebody in the nose. Just one quick. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Go in there. Hit them in the nose. Love it. I love it. Wallace shoves Owens into Cody, knocking him down, and then the camera picks up Owens explaining what had happened. So I loved this. That was great segment because I was like, oh, I got to sit through this crap. But, no, it was worth it. It was worth it. So, okay, cool. So then we get L.A. Knight music hit and the fans pop. L.A. Knight versus Santos Escobar. Title defense. Champ should come out second since he was challenged and he's the champ. But let's, you know, tradition. You know, screw that. Look, I'm not all for every tradition. No, but some things you want to look like it's an actual sporting event. Your champion comes out second. Yeah. So, check this out. The bell rings, and the ring announcer begins her introduction. But then Knight, L.A. Knight gets attacked by the henchmen. One of them lands a flying knee, and there's no DQ call. And then commentary tries to play it off by saying it's all it's all legal because the bell that we all heard didn't ring. Oh uh, no no no! It's quiet. Bing bing bing! This is your and he gets pulled out, attacked, assaulted, physical contact, no DQ call. Then the referee ejects them, and they're all shocked for some reason. I think that looks stupid. I think that's stupid. Like, why are you getting rid of me? I only broke the rules and made this thing almost non-competitive, and I really interfered with everything that everybody was going to do. I don't understand. Then Lopez is ejected. I was like, why is her name Lopez? I'm like, come on. There are so many Hispanic names out there. Any case. Now, if it's her real name and she's going with that, okay, fine. No qualm. But still, too many names. The ref calls for the bill. So now we get a second opening match bill for some reason. And yeah, I listen to, watch every other match. There are no two bells. Now, I admit there are times in the past where you hear ding, 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 and then they do their entrances, ding, ding, ding. That has happened. So there's a, uh, it's, it's argument. You can make an argument. Um, let's see, where was I? Uh, bell didn't ring, referee ejects. Okay, ref calls. Um, this was, it was kind of a standard opening match, but Knight has to fight, you know, back from a damage deficit, and he does so relatively easy. Uh, Knight clears the announce table, but and, and the fans are chanting for the table. And in this case, Knight did this, so the fans are pretty much like, yay, do it, do it, do it. So I'm like, I can't be mad at the fans on this one, not this one. 
but Escobar hit the flying double knee on the night onto the table, and then he hit a pretty frog splash in the ring for a two count. Okay. Knight does, uh, now, a little bit later, not too much time after that, because it was just nothing but finishing moves hit on L.A. Knight. He just kept kicking out uh, from the beginning to the end. But then Knight, he, you know, he, he counters. He, he hypes the crowd. He's on the second rope. He hops to the top, diving elbow, got the pin. And I wrote, you know, and I wrote, you know this was the right way to win. Kept, keep the fans happy, keep them highly upbeat, and look good doing it. Did the right thing. So then, um, you know, and Knight is somebody I'm, I'm pretty high on L.A. Knight. I've, I've been, I've been high on, on, on this guy um, in the N.W.A. too, you know. So I, I, I like this guy, and I'm glad that he's finally getting something. But I really do think for his moniker and what he could do in that ring and how seasoned he is, he should be nothing but main event. He shouldn't be mid card it. He, he, I really do think LA Knight should be opening main event until there's a slot for him for world title, undisputed title, or something. But as soon as LA Knight has to go for tag titles, he might as well just quit, retire, because it's over. Tag titles are not meant for people that they take serious. That's what I've noticed. And if I'm wrong, hey, I'm, I'm wrong, but tag titles have not been put on people that has gone on to do great things after they lose them. And that's that's been in any incarnation of WWF and or E. You know, Shawn Michaels, they won the tag titles. They did well, I think. Uh, and then he had a while without them and then turn on Jannetty and Intercontinental, work his way up. He's got the fans, he's hated. He works his way up politically in the back. Title shots, win, works with A-list wrestlers, and there you go. And it took years. It took years, it won't overnight everybody. So next we get Bloodline coming out, tag team title match, Bloodline versus the Street Profits. And so when the music hit, the fans are ticked. Solo uh, wants to be acknowledged by Washington fans, D.C. The fans are angry. Solo's got a three-point itinerary or something. So he says that the OTC is D-O-N-E. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not trying to be insulted. I'm literally doing what the fans... The fans didn't know what he said. They heard him. It's almost like they couldn't spell. So then he says... He's done. And they're like, boo. I was like, wow, y'all y'all couldn't spell done? I was like, wow, this this is terrible. This this is terrible. Y'all go to a cheerleader practice or something or event and or competition and y'all are gonna be lost. Cause they yell, they spell stuff out, and y'all just not gonna know what's going on. And right now, any heel that comes out. It starts talking about how stupid people in Washington are. You you can't even fight back. Y'all lost the ground. Oh. Ugh. Feel bad for y'all for a moment right now, but then that's that's gonna fade in about a sentence. Cause I ain't gonna care. It does then next he says it doesn't matter if Kevin wins or Cody retains. Because Solo's got next to bring that belt back to the family and to himself. Third, he says something's wrong with the tag titles. And he demands Jacob, he's like, Jacob fought to step up. And I'm like, oh, snap. And Jacob steps up. And he's like, you need to give me that belt. And he's looking like, huh? And he says, matter of fact, give it to Tonga Loa. And he gives it to Tonga Loa. Loa takes it. Jacob's like, yeah, you can tell he's all in on it, right? But he's confused, and I like that. Jacob is just marvelous at what he does. I, I try not to be in that Jacob can do no wrong, but Jacob can do no wrong. And then the fans, oh, they get a little comeuppance. 
Because when they give the belt to Tonga Loa, the fans are chanting, you can't wrestle. And it leads credence to you're only as good as your last match because Loa hasn't been in a match. He's kind of floundered at junct many junctures when it comes to cheating and certain just certain things he's missed on yes but that don't mean he can't wrestle people just sometimes they hit a wall Lowe's been in the WWE well F before he's in WWE now I don't know if he's on buyer's remorse or it's like we're gonna do what we do but the fans are chanting it the eye patch is gone his eye looks all right wow so whoo I was like, this is bad, Loa. And I was like, and, and then Solo says that he can't, that Jacob cannot be the tag champion and his enforcer. So Jacob got a promotion. Sokoa has officially brushed off that enforcer moniker. And Jacob is hugging him and he's shouting that he loves Solo. He's like, I love you, Solo. I love you. I love you, Tribal Chief. I, I was like, this dude is 100% in there. This guy might as well be method acting. Y'all need to watch out. Then the Street Profits come out and they're talking trash. And I was like, and, and I, I wasn't happy with it. No, but at the same time, I was like, they, they, they digging in on them. You know, it's like, you know, you think you're so good. You got a promotion. I'm like, you know, how can I say this? You wouldn't, back in the day, you wouldn't talk trash to Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchett, and Barry Windham saying that you're nothing but lap dogs that can't wrestle, and you're not even you're you're good enough on the car for tag team, but you're not good on the, good enough on the car for singles, good anything. You wouldn't do that because it wouldn't make sense, and you know you're gonna get trounced on. It's gonna be bad. It's going to be a whole bunch of horses just, just hoof stomping you into the damn dirt. So, okay. So they're talking their trash. They do good. They get the crowd up and going. And I wrote, Tonga Loa needs to show up like he has in Japan many times. Loa's eye is okay. And it seems that only those who are G.O.D. fans know what he can do. G.O.D. Gorillas of Destiny, which is damn good name so those like I Cedra and, and, and some of you listeners out there y'all know what G.O.D. can do you know there are multiple modes of tag team expertise and they showed you tonight well last night basics they showed you their basics they didn't even they, they didn't even show up. They just did their basics and moved on. Oh, G.O.D. did well. And when the Street Profits began to cheat, Jacob had to even the odds and Tama picked up the win. That sliding complete shot. So after the match, the bloodline attack street profits and then diy they run into assist they did a good job at first and then bloodline just started wrecking them bloodline ruins all hope and after two samoan spikes bloodline stand tall in the middle of their ring and i'm i'm getting high on this bloodline i'm liking it they're doing right they need to keep solo training a little bit they need to keep uh, you know keep him on the mic he's doing well but he they need to watch what he says without a mic when the camera's in his face because he was like yeah that's how you do it that's how you do it you know bring the titles back and i'm like y'all already got the titles now traditionally speaking how this works is when you have a title on the line singles or tag it don't matter the champion comes out, usually second, but in general, the champion comes out. When that match begins, when that bell rings for the match, the champion is no longer the champion. The champion is a defender, but he is not recognized as the champion. 
that's tradition, okay? I'm just speaking traditionally the way they want the psychology to be. The champion is not the champion. The belt is up for grabs. It hovers in the ether between them. So you've got one trying to protect the belt and the one trying to gain the belt. That's just how the psychology of that's supposed to go. So when he says bring it back, traditionally, he's not wrong. But modernly, um, he's, you know, is, he sounds like an idiot at that juncture. It's like, bring it back. You already got it. Y'all got it. It's on the podium. The belts are. You know, it should have your names on it. At least say bloodline. How you gonna get back what you already got? Bring, you know, bring me this orange juice. You mean the one that's already in your hand that you've been drinking from? You want me to bring that to you? So it's, it's kind of like that. So uh, that's why I say that. But practice makes better. I don't, I don't say practice makes perfect. No, practice makes better. And you'll get there. So then we get to our main event of the evening. W, WE Tag Team Main Event. And uh, how can I say this? I get why it's the main event. And there was a spot in there that I think a lot of people are going to miss. It'd be amazing. It'd be so much chef's kiss if when they recap this, if they can capture that one tiny spot I hope they do I hope they do when they recap it next week so Cody comes out and then Kevin Owens he makes his entrance a town down under they make their entrance and this is your honestly this is your standard tag match that saw Owens being the life of the match at all junctures Owens eventually got the hot tag and he was a consistent damager, not letting Theory or Waller recover too much. I mean, he was knocking him. He, he makes the, Cody dies, makes the tag, always drops down. He runs around the apron. He, well, on the floor, knocks one down with a shoulder block, clothesline the other, runs back, sentons the other, sentons the other. He does his, he, he's on his roll. He's doing his thing. He gets him in the ring. He's on offense. He's. You know, he gets the super kick counter. He stands like a boss almost. He's doing great. He does what he's supposed to do and how he's supposed to do it. Everybody got their stuff in in this match, but it was very standard. You never felt like anyone was really in any trouble in terms of the baby faces, but you knew things were happening. So this was really good. Um, and he got, you know, he got his swanton, which is not a finisher. But he did get the pop-up power bomb, which he has been his finisher for a while. So okay, no problem. He did good. Then after the match, Owens has the belt, and he rushes Cody. Owens is so good at what he does. Owens rushes to Cody and hands him the belt as he passed, and this was perfect. You could hear some of the fans legit scream in horror as they anticipated the heel turn they all forgot Owens was known for. And yeah, admit it, if not for Waller's opening segment at the opening of this whole show, it would not have been in your heads that this could happen. Because everyone forgets the past when someone makes a turn. They forget. They forget. And see, for me, Owens turning on Cody last night as of this recording, because this is Saturday, um, and somebody's on some kind of loud thing outside. Uh, but anyway, Cody, uh, he, it, it, turning on Cody just doesn't seem logical at this juncture. And I'm considering that Cody still has to fight the bloodline, and Owens might have to join him. Besides, if Owens turns... I think it will be because Randy turned or will turn. And not unless their tag team is done for a few months. Randy seems to be on uh, Raw. So it's like maybe they're, they're not there. 
who knows but i enjoyed a lot of this kevin owens did everything right everything and i was looking at how he was doing the sentons and getting up i was like oh, i might be able to do that in fire pro that looked nice so I, I, I think this was good. This was not Cody's day to shine. Cody did just enough just to be there. But, but they, they, Cody made sure Kevin would shine. And he did. I like it. I think they're on the right track. Owens is not going to win that belt bash in Berlin. He's not winning it. I don't know what they're going to do. And I don't know how they're going to lead into it. The go home show on Friday, which might be pre taped, or they might hold it in Berlin and then the next day. So, who knows? But I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to do this. Double baby face could still be a really damn good match. It's not about the build up, it's about the match at this junction. And I really do think that they've done a good job at the subtle build up. So I like it. And Cody, when asked by Owens, hey, you know, I'm not that guy. You know, you don't think I'm that guy. And he's like, hey, I can only take you for your word. That's all I can do. And it'll be what it is. So that's it. I like that. Very neutral, but nothing that says, I believe you. But it's good enough. You can see it on Owens' face like, ah, I got something to do, but it's all right. So they're doing this well, doing it very well. So that's going to do it for me. This has been Central for CR Wrestling Commentary on Friday night, SmackDown-ish. And, hey, I'm recovering. I'm going to do well. I ain't got a choice because I got to bring this to you. And with that, I want you all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And I will see you next time.